Hi, this is going to be a video about Mats 2023, but before I get going, I want to say something about the widespread technical disruption. We understand that many, many, many people had issues with the test, and we would like to hear from you if you were affected. There's a website for a special consideration form, and the department will be deciding what to do next based on these forms. Please do get in touch. With that out of the way, this is going to be a quick look at the solutions. This is Matt 2023. I'm James Munro. Let's go. 1a. In this question, we write each term as log base 10 of something and work out which one is closest to the next log base 10 of a power of 10. In this question, it turns out to be c. 1b. One of these is a square number and it's not the one that ends in 3 because square numbers don't end in 3. Check some small squares to work that out. If a square ends in zero, then it has an even number of zeros at the end, so it's not E either, and A is suspiciously close to 10 to the power of 8, which is a square number. That leaves C and D, and if a square ends in 5, it must be a multiple of 25, so only C fits, and C is the square. 1c, these circles are tangent to the outside of the square and to each other, so if we draw in some radii and do some trigonometry, we can work out that the sum of those radii is 2 minus root 2. 1d, we need to take some square roots and add some numbers along the way, keeping track of whether things are positive or negative. If we do that very, very carefully, then the answer is c. 1e, we need to take an arithmetic sequence for the sum of all of the numbers up to 3 to the power of 10, and subtract a geometric sequence for the sum of all the numbers that are powers of 3 up to 3 to the 10. If we do that and simplify our answer, it simplifies down to this option here. 1f, this is the difference of two squares twice, the first bracket and the third bracket to com combine to give 1 minus 4x squared, which when multiplied by the middle bracket gives us 1 minus 16x squared. Now use the binomial theorem to find the coefficient of x to the 12. The answer is a. 1g, write down the discriminants of these two quadratics, b squared minus 4ac is 0 and c squared minus 4ab is 0. Now multiply and divide by bc to get down to the discriminant for the new quadratic, it's negative, so there are no real roots. 1h. It's not necessarily the triangle with the longest sides. Each of these shares two sides, so we can use half AB sine C for the area of the triangle with A and B fixed. We want sine C to be large, so we want the angle to be close to 90 degrees, so we want the other side to be close to 10 root 2. The number which is closest to 10 root 2 is 15, and this triangle is the largest. 1i. We know all of the roots of the polynomial. It has a root at 0 and a repeated root at m. There's an unknown coefficient out the front, but we have two more facts, that p1 is 1 and p2 is 2. We can write those down and get simultaneous equations for the coefficient and for m. If we solve those, we get 3 over 2. 1j. This function looks like a sequence of rectangles next to each other, each one half as wide and four-thirds as tall as the previous. Their areas form a geometric sequence, and the sum of that sequence is 3. Question 2, part i, here's the graph and here are the turning points. Part 2, if we square p1 and subtract 2, then we get exactly the expression for p2. Part 3, p3 is p1 cubed minus 3p1. Part 4, if we divide by x squared, we can write this in terms of p2 and p1, then use our fact about p2 to write it just as a quadratic in terms of p1, solve the quadratic for p1, and then solve each of those quadratics for x to get the four roots that are on screen now. Part 5, this one isn't in the same format, but we can spot that x equals 1 is a root of the polynomial. If we pull out the factor of x minus 1 using the factor theorem, and then look at the remaining polynomial, it is in the right form where we can divide by x cubed, write it in terms of p3, p2, and p1, use our facts to express that as a cubic in p1, solve the cubic by spotting its roots, and then solve three quadratics to find the remaining six roots of the original equation, which are on screen now. Question 3, part 1, that 2x plus 30 degrees takes all real values including 0, so this cosine reaches its normal maximum value of 1. Part 2, if you make a substitution for the cosine, this is a quadratic which has maximum when the cosine is equal to 1 half, which is a value that it can take. The value of the function there is 1 quarter. Part 3, this is the previous function raised to the power of 5, x to the 5 is an increasing function, big number in and big number out, so we should put our maximum value of 1 quarter in and get 4 to the minus 5 out, which is 1 over 1024. Part 4, we need to do some cos squared sine squared stuff and also do something with that cos 150. If we convert all of these to be the same trigonometric function and then make a substitution for that trigonometric function, we find a quadratic raised to the power of 8. 
Because 8 is an even number, we need to look at the maximum and minimum values of the quadratic. And in fact, it's when the trigonometric function is equal to minus 1 that this takes its maximum value of 4 to the power of 8. Question 4. We need to do some normal coordinate geometry to write down the normal to the curve and then find, with a little bit of Pythagoras, the correct point that is a certain distance away. The coordinates are on screen now. Part 2. For this to lie on the parabola, xb squared over 2 would have to be yb. If we write that down and rearrange it and simplify quite a lot, we get the thing on the screen. Part 3. If we make the substitution and rearrange, then we find that that equality is this function, f of t, written in two different ways on screen there. Part 4. The minimum value of f of t corresponds to the minimum value of d to the 2 thirds. So if we can work that out, then we can find the value of d in the question. Minimising f means differentiating something of the form t to the a twice. If we do that, we find the minimum happens when t is 2, and the value of d turns out to be 3 root 3 at that point. Question 5. The numbers go 1, 1, and then 2, 3, 5. Part 2. You have to keep using the relationship each time you want the next Fibonacci number, and you're given the first two, so you need n minus 2 operations to get up to fn. Part 3. S1 is 2 because anything goes for a sequence of length 1, but S2 is only 3, not 4, because 1, 1 is not allowed. Part 4. Your sequence might start with a 0 or 1. If it starts with a 0, then it's just an allowable sequence after that of length n minus 1. But if it starts with a 1, then it needs to have a 0 next, followed by an allowable sequence of length n minus 2. That's the same equation as fn at the top, and the values at the start match up as well. Part 5. We're asked to consider the middle value of the sequence, which might be a 0 or it might be a 1. If it's a 0, then on the left and on the right, we've got independent choices of valid sequences. Um, whereas if it's a 1, then we need zeros on either side and then valid sequences that are just a little bit shorter. That corresponds to the terms in the expression O. Part 6. Let's again consider the n minus 1th position, which might be a 0 or a 1. That gives us two cases again, and very similar logic, followed by a bit of algebra with the f numbers, gives the expression on the board. Part 7. You need to keep track of f2 to the k, and also f2 to the k minus 1, in order to increment k. There are six operations you're supposed to do each time round, and taking into account the starting position of where we were for small values of k, you need 6k minus n, operations to get up to f2 to the k or thereabouts. Question 6. Here's a quick look at the question again, defining octatrees and roots and parents and leaves and sequences. Part i, the code for this tree, is 61658886. Part 2, the tree with all 8s, has 8 as the root and then everything else immediately underneath the 8. Part 3, this tree is just a straight line, 8316547 Part 4, the leaves are 2, 4, 5 and 7. They're precisely the numbers which do not appear in the code. Part 5, 2 is the smallest leaf, so it must be a child of the first node in the list here, 1. And after it's removed, 1 is still a parent to something else. The next smallest leaf is 4, which has parent 6. And then the next smallest leaf is 5, which has parent 1. So the leaves are 2 and 5 underneath 1. Part 6, the tree, looks like this. Part 7, we can generalise that procedure to keep identifying the smallest leaf, removing it and seeing what the consequences are, constructing the parent of each leaf, and then rebuilding the tree from the top down. Part 8, the number of octatrees is the number of sequences. There are seven digits, so 8 to the power of 7 sequences is much larger than 2 million, so there are more than 2 million distinct octatrees. That was Matt 2023 done quickly. Thanks for watching.